Good evening, everyone. My name is Jen Pernarski, and I'm a communications officer here at the City of Kingston. You are in our public engagement session to talk about playground improvements at three parks across Kingston, the North Playground at Lake Ontario Park, LaSalle Park, and O'Connor Park. There are 14 people who are registered to join us tonight, and there are six of you here already. So thank you again for spending your evening with us. We are going to begin our public public engagement session now with a few housekeeping items. So welcome again to the O'Connor Park, LaSalle Park, and Lake Ontario Park Playground Replacement presentation. This session is live streamed and recorded. And to protect your privacy, participants, your video and microphones are turned off, but we do have the chat available for technical support questions. I'm going to go over a couple of technology troubleshooting questions because that does happen. So depending on your version of Zoom that you're using, you can adjust the view options to see the presentation, everyone who's speaking or a combination of the both. You can go to Get Involved Kingston where we have some resources that link you directly to Zoom. If for some reason you get disconnected from the internet, you can call into the meeting by phone. I'm going to read out this number and the webinar ID for you. It's 647-558-0588. And the webinar ID is 862-3848-7352. You can also follow along on YouTube at youtube.com slash the city of Kingston. There will be a formal Q&A session in this meeting. So you can ask a question in writing by typing in the Q&A area, which is at the bottom of your screen. You can also ask a question verbally during the Q&A period. So if, oh, got ahead of myself there. You can um, click the raise hand button. You can, if you're calling in by phone, press star nine to raise your hand and we will turn on your microphone so you can ask your question verbally. Because we are talking about three different parks here, um, when we get to the Q&A session, a section, I will go over these reminders again, and then we're gonna ask you to use um, the initials of each of the playgrounds to make sure that we know specifically which playground that you're interested in. Up on the screen now are the guidelines for participation. If you joined us, you know, perhaps before COVID when we had, um, uh, public engagement sessions in person, you would have seen these on a big pull-up banner, but here they are online. The guidelines for participation were developed with residents, members of council and city staff as a way for all of us to gather and be respectful and open to ideas during public engagement sessions. I'm going to leave these up for a few minutes, or sorry, not a few minutes, that's too long, for about 30 seconds so that you can read through these. If anybody has any objections or concerns, I'll ask you to use the raise hand function so that we can address any concerns you have about the guidelines for participation. So I don't see any concerns with the guidelines for participation. So I'm going to move over into uh, the reason why we're all gathered here together. And it's the playground replacement for O'Connor Park, LaSalle Park and Lake Ontario Park. So I'm going to ask that um, Shanda Sames and uh, Ryan, if you can turn on your video and then Shanda, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Jen. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending tonight's public consultation. I'm Shanda Sains, uh, Parks and Open Space Coordinator uh, in the city's engineering department, services department. Joining with me is Neil Unsworth, manager of Parks and Shorelines, and our consultant, Ryan Paliga, and Elizabeth Latif, uh, if Elizabeth can turn on her video as well. <laughs> from Lashley and Associates. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as Jen had alluded that this 
Tonight's uh, meeting is we're going to introduce the playground replacements for some aging play play equipments at three city parks. Uh, this includes uh, O'Connor Park in Strathcona neighborhood, uh, LaSalle Park in the West End uh, in the Henderson neighborhood, and Lake Ontario Park, a large urban uh, waterfront park in, to the south. Uh, we anticipate to be replacing these playgrounds uh, next spring. Um, we will start by providing a general overview of the project. Next slide, please. If you happen to have questions during the presentation, um, feel free to type into the Q&A uh, window at the bottom. Uh, when typing the questions, please identify uh, the location in an abbreviation form um, before the question or comment. Um, as a suggestion, OC for O'Connor, LS for LaSalle, and Lake Ontario, oh, LOP for Lake Ontario Park. Um, questions will be, will be answered at the end of the introduction in the order of the presentation. Uh, we plan to start with O'Connor, then go to LaSalle, and end with Lake Ontario Park. Any feedbacks that we received during tonight's session and from the online survey, we will consider when advancing the design. Now I'll hand it over to our landscape architect, Ryan Paliga, who will walk you through the project. Um, once he is done, then we will open it up to questions. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Ryan. All right, I'll take it from here. Hi, everyone. Uh, first in tonight's presentation is O'Connor Park. The park's located in central Kingston, as, uh, as Chad mentioned, just south of John Counter Boulevard, west of Sir John A and east of Portsmouth, to give you an idea. When we reviewed this site, we found that generally the playground equipment was in poor condition, but the existing junior play structure is still pretty good and it offers good play value for the younger kids. To the right of the slide, you can see some images of the existing features of the park, including the senior play structure, which isn't in great condition, west of the pathway, the junior play structure, east of the pathway in the middle image, and a view of the swings and the shade shelter from the Glen Eyre Muse entrance. Um, next slide, please. The site has several constraints, including some steep inaccessible slopes, shallow bedrock, and a utility corridor that goes beside the existing north-south pathway. We wanted to come up with solutions that took advantage of existing features, responded to existing constraints, and provided good play value for the kids. Next slide, please. So for our proposed solutions, uh, we came up with two options, and here's option one. In this version, we propose to keep the existing junior structure and add a new teeter-totter and spring toy to increase the play value for the young ones uh, to the north. On the south, beside the uh, existing shade structure, we provide an accessible pathway to the new senior play structure and also add the new bench, which then integrates the space with that structure. A double base swing set and accessible activity panel is proposed with the senior play structure as well. All the play areas that uh, we show will utilize uh, engineered wood fiber as a safety surface. Next slide, please. So for option one, uh, here's some imagery of the, exist of the proposed equipment. The existing uh, junior play structure is on the top left. Um, it's good for the two to five year olds. Just to the right of it, the new senior play structure promotes hand-eye coordination and balance, typically for a five to 12 year age range. Right of that is a double base swing set with two strap seats, an infant seat, an accessible seat uh, so that everyone can play. And then along on the bottom row, a new teeter-totter, spring toy, and accessible panel uh, will complement the, uh, the existing junior play structures and the, the new senior play structure. Next slide, please. Here's option two. In this version, we propose to remove all of the existing play structures and consolidate the playground area within a similar area as the existing playground that was located east of the pathway. Similar to option one, we propose an accessible pathway to the play structure and integrate a new bench and shade shelter space. The new junior senior play structure is for all ages of children and a double base swing set uh, is set on an engineered wood fiber safety surface. Next slide, please. Here's the equipment for uh, option two. So the junior, the junior senior play structure, like I said, is suitable for a range of ages. It integrates 
um, climbing, sliding, and ground activities uh, so that everyone can participate. That's on the left side. On the right side, the double base swing set with two strap seats for uh, uh, older children, an infant seat for the young ones, an accessible uh, seat uh, provides inclusivity so that everyone can play together. Next slide, please. Here's our next park. We're moving on to LaSalle. The park's located in Southeast Kingston, like Chanda mentioned, south of Bath Road, west of Days and east of McEwen Drive, to give you an idea. It can be accessed from both McEwen Drive and Days Road, but the parking lot is on McEwen. To the right, we can see some existing features. We've got the existing play area on the top, the bollards along the existing parking lot and the middle picture, and then the relationship between the parking lot, the building and the ball diamond in the lower picture. Next slide, please. So with this park, Utilities Kingston is currently expanding the sewage pumping station near the existing playground. The existing playground is currently blocked off uh, to allow for construction of that station. In order to provide access to the play equipment when the pumping station is under construction, uh, we need to provide a, a new location in the park for the playground. There are some other issues with the existing playground location. It's quite far from the main parking access to the, to the park. And the access to the space is not formalized. The north and south access points are not accessible due to steep slopes and stairs. In our investigations, we wanted to find a spot that was easily accessed, would not interfere with other park uses, uses underground infrastructure, and provide enough, enough space for, uh, for play equipment. We felt the space north of the washroom building will provide good visibility from the street and the baseball diamond, and would align with the future trail system along the west branch of the cat. Katerakai Creek. Next slide, please. So here's our first concept. We, in this one, we extend and repair the fence to keep kids away from the creek to the north. And we integrate a short accessible pathway from the existing parking lot to the new playground with a bench for observation. The, the path would align with the future trail system. A new compact play structure with a variety of features takes advantage of the limited space and a new single base swing set provides additional play opportunities. Like the other parks, we intend to use uh, engineered wood fiber uh, as a safety surface. Next slide, please. So here's a look at the proposed, proposed play equipment. We have a compact, compact play structure with opportunities for climbing, sliding, playing, and interacting, and a single base swing set with both a strap and infant seat. Next slide, please. Our second concept provides opportunities for climbing, sliding, and swinging in three separate features on an engineered wood fiber safety surface. Again, we extend and repair the existing fence to keep the kids away from the creek to the north. And in this one, we provide a slightly longer curvilinear access path to lead from the existing parking lot to the new playground with a bench for observation. The pathway access point uh, is proposed to align with the future pathway again, to kind of integrate that into future development. Next slide, please. And here's the uh, proposed play features. We've got a 1.8 meter or six foot slide to provide sliding opportunities. We've got a dome climber to give the kids a chance to climb and interact. And we've got a single base swing set, uh, which will provide uh, added play opportunities with both a strap and an infant seat. Next slide, please. Our last park for the evening is Lake Ontario Park. It's located in South Central Kingston, just west of Providence Care. The nearest roads would be King Street West and Country Club Drive. In this one, we're only looking at the older playground to the northern, in the north of the park. The new, the large newer playground by the splash pad will not be affected. We have an aging masonry barbecue slated for removal, which is shown on the picture to the right at the bottom. We also show the existing aging play structures uh, in the top and the middle pictures. Next slide, please. When we went to the site, we noticed that all of the existing play features were in a very poor condition. The pea gravel play surface is not accessible to modern standards either. We had a look at the existing barbecue, which was certainly beautiful when constructed, but it's starting to seriously degrade and does not provide the opportunity to have multiple group barbecue spaces. We note that there's an existing unused gravel pathway to the west that would make a perfect access path in the future and would minimize impact on the park. 
We like the idea of moving the playground closer to the trees, but we wanted to make sure we would provide a buffer from the parking lot, providing to provide separate and provide separation from any event camping activities that may occur on the parking lot space. Utilizing a similar footprint to the existing playground area would help minimize damage to the park and combining play areas would help for accessibility, inclusion and maintenance. Next slide, please. For our first concept, uh, we proposed the playground in a similar footprint to the existing and the area, the play areas combined uh, to allow for accessibility, inclusion and improve on maintenance efficiency. The new play area is provided, is proposed to be accessed by an asphalt pathway that leads from the existing park parking lot over an old gravel path and a new bench on which to rest while watching the kids um, play. We, since we proposed to remove the existing masonry barbecue, we propose to provide three new outdoor grills. One will be provided with an accessible pad. The play equipment is proposed to be a series of individual components in this, uh, in this concept. Next slide, please. The series of play options uh, include sliding down a 1.8 meter slide, climbing on a new dome climber, or swing and swinging on a double base swing set that has again strap seats and infant street and an it's infant seat and an accessible seat. The image on the right is a, is the proposed individual outdoor barbecue grill. Next slide please. For a second concept, again we utilize a similar footprint to minimize damage to the park. The new play area is accessed in the same way as concept one by an asphalt pathway that leads from the existing parking lot over the old gravel path. We provide a new bench to room to rest on while watching the kids. In this one, we provide a new play structure and a new double base swing set on engineered wood fiber safety surface. Since we removed the existing barbecue, we provide again, three new outdoor grills along the, crowd, along the pathway. One will be provided with an accessible pad. Next slide, please. Taking a closer look at the proposed play structure on the left, on, on the left, it includes opportunities for sliding, climbing, and interacting. The double base swing set has strap seats, an infant seat, and an accessible seat. And then the proposed outdoor grill in the top right um, provides opportunities for multiple group interaction. Next slide, please. Thanks, Ryan and Shanda. We have now reached the formal Q&A part of today's engagement session. So just a couple of reminders. Um, please use the Q&A uh, tool in Zoom. It's at the bottom and it's like a little, uh, it's a little bubble with the letters Q&A rather than, rather than the chat. That way we can make sure that we keep everyone's questions organized. When you're asking a question, make sure to please include the initials of the park. So for O'Connor, please use OC. And for Lake Ontario Park, please use LOP. And for LaSalle, please use LS. So I see we have some questions in the Q&A and I'm gonna go through them. Um, I see Anna and Jessica that um, you have lots of questions about uh, O'Connor Park. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go through them um, as, as you ask them. Some of those questions um, I believe were also addressed during the presentation. So your questions might've already been answered, but um, We'll just go through them anyway to make sure that we've covered everything that you might have questions or concerns about. Um, so the first couple of questions are from Anna. Are you updating or replacing the baby swings at O'Connor Park? So that just for everyone who might be watching on YouTube and for our panelists and everyone listening, um, the first questions that we're going to answer tonight are about O'Connor Park. I can answer this one. I think the, in, the intent with this is to uh, replace the, uh, the baby swings. I just want to clarify that. Um, so there will be one baby swing and one accessible swing. So there's, it's a double base swing that we're proposing, two straps, uh, one baby swing and one accessible swing. And the next question from Anna, 
Are you changing the gravel or sand? The intent is to update everything to engineered wood fiber for accessibility. The next question from Anna, are you updating pathways or adding additional pathways that wind through the playground, like at Skeleton Park, connecting Glen Eyre Muse pathway? Neil, go ahead. Hi, right, Shandon Ryan, if you don't mind. Um, for people who are attending Glen Eyre Muse, uh, we believe is the cul-de-sac that is to the east of this park. Uh, if I can get a few nods, make sure I've got the right one. So it's not in our current um, budget to connect that pathway to the playground or the main sort of north-south spine path that's existing in the park, but we do recognize that it dead ends at, at the edge of the park and kind of drops down four feet. Um, so we know there's a need to connect it in the future. Um, so the park designs have both been uh, either one that the community chooses, uh, have both been picked, uh, designed so that they could fit the pathway in in the future. So they're not going to be blocking that pathway from happening, but uh, it's a fairly significant connection to make and we will not be adding that as part of this project at this time. Thanks, Neil. The next question from Anna, why is there not an option to keep little kids, keep the little kids area and switch the big kids area for their junior and senior climber? Can we go back to the uh, slide that shows the O'Connor playground? Um, sure. Layout. Just tell me when to stop. Not this one. Was it this one uh, or the other option? I think both. Okay. Uh, or sorry, maybe the other one. Um, yeah, so this one does show that we are keeping a little kid's area and adding a few more elements to it. This is just reusing the existing structure uh, and adding, adding a senior structure to the south. Um, the other, can you go to the next slide? But that's, yeah, that one. <laughs> so this one's a junior senior, so it can both do both um, duties. Uh, I don't know if I'm answering the question correctly, um, if Anna wants to clarify <laughs> or Mia wants to answer. <laughs> oh, I think you did a great job answering the question, Shanda, but I think I can read between the lines a little, a little bit more. I believe the question asks, can we keep the existing junior climber, uh, which is shown in option one, and have a junior senior structure? So we did not propose to do that because the junior senior structure um, serves both age ranges. That's one comment. But the second reason is that it's more expensive than the senior play structure on its own. Uh, it also takes up more space. So we couldn't afford to have the junior senior structure um, as well as maintaining the existing junior structure. Um, if there was a desire to maintain the existing junior structure and add a more traditional um, platform play senior structure, that's something we could take in feedback through the Get Involved platform. If the overhead climbing senior structure that's proposed is not desirable, um, by the community, then, you know, we're open to hearing that. Um, but we can't afford to do a junior senior new structure and retain the existing junior um, due to the fact that we have to upgrade the whole play surface and so forth and so on. So I think that answers the question for now. Thanks, Anna. And thanks, Neil. Um, and I see that you've added a couple of extra comments into the Q&A just saying that you're, you know, you've updated some questions. Um, so we're still going to go through them, um, but you're welcome at any time that, to, you know, to raise your hands if you need to clarify, but these are some great questions that you're sending in. Her next question is, there's currently four big swings and two baby swings. 
Why would we replace two big kids, one baby and one accessible when we would lose two swings? I think that's, again, that's a budget um, and a space requirement that we're considering. We're trying to maximize the play value that we can within our budget that's been approved. Thanks, Shanda. We're still talking about O'Connor Park and the next question comes from Jessica. And she asks, the current pathway that runs north-south through the park is in bad condition. Will this be repaired when the work is done? And I'm not sure if that's the same pathway that was asked about before. Neil, Ryan, can you address this question? Yeah, no, it's not the same pathway that was asked about, um, but the answer is still the same. Uh, the answer is no, um, the, the, the pathway is not proposed to be upgraded as part of this project. Um, unfortunately, the, the cost for the pathway alone is probably on par with the cost for the whole playground replacement. So uh, we, we don't have the budget to, to repair it, but we certainly will continue to monitor the condition of it. And we do know that it's not in great condition. Uh, we have worse ones out there, um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll certainly put it in um, for a recommendation for future pathway upgrade. And probably at the same time, consider the Glenner Muse connection as well. Okay, the next question is from Anna, who notes the park is very large. Did you consider adding any basketball, soccer, tennis, or other sports features? What about naturalized play equipment like logs and natural climbers? I can start, um, but if people want to jump in, uh, go right ahead. Um, the park does have some grading issues. We have some slopes um, that limit the areas available for such sport features. Um, and again, I, I would imagine that, that there's some budgetary issues there as well. Um, so the, the courts we did not consider. Um, I also want to add on that uh... The focus of this project is to replace the aging play, play equipments. So um, that, that's our main focus is try to replace those play equipments. We don't have the budget to kind of add, do a whole play uh, park renovation at this time. And naturalized play equipment in the uh, parks and uh, parks and rec master plan, there are, some recommendations for naturalized play in playground, but we're trying to limit those locations. Just they just require a lot more maintenance than typical playground uh, equipment. Thanks. The next questions come from Jessica about O'Connor Park. Um, she says that the tennis court, basketball court would be great but would also like to ensure that we don't lose the space where the ice rink goes in the winter. So that's more, I guess, more of a comment. I don't know if the project team wants to address any of those concerns, but. Yes, uh, thank you for the comment. We'll make note of that for future works uh, and improvements to the park. But at this time, there, it, it won't impact the uh, out, outdoor rink location. Thanks Shanda for clarifying that. The next question comes from Alex. And just before I read out Alex's question, you'll see that I've dropped into the chat a link that goes directly to the survey about O'Connor Park Playground. Um, so feedback that's collected through here on the Q&A on Zoom. Um, and also you can participate in the Get Involved survey. So Alex's question is, although dated, the structure on the west side is the favorite of many kids and appears to only need maintaining with new paint. When we had a look at that structure, there were a number of um, bolts and in, that provided entanglement issues. And there were some gaps in the platforms um, that don't quite meet with um, the modern accessibility standards. Um, so that's why we felt that it needed to be replaced. 
And Alex is, I believe it's kind of a follow-up question to that one is, can the Western structure be maintained while also having a new structure on the East side? I can, I can answer that. So the answer is no. Hi, Alex. If it's the same Alex Adams that I know very well, it's nice to hear your voice, uh, uh, even on the computer. <laughs> um, but no, the structure's past its life cycle and we can't keep it in uh, rotation. This this park was um, specifically brought up the kind of uh, pecking order for replacements specifically due to that the structure's condition. Um, so I'd recommend that we try and uh, if that is... Uh, a piece, of, a piece of equipment that the, the public really likes and they favor, then I, I would recommend we try and sort of recreate that experience with uh, the replacement equipment that's proposed. So that's good feedback for us. We will look at the play value that's on the big one, the, the old one, and see, um, and see how that translates over um, in, in the plans. Thanks, Alex and Neil. The next question comes from Victor. Um, and they ask, O'Connor Park is quite large. Are there any plans to use the available free space for new features such as bas basketball courts and pickleball? Um, we, we answered this one a little bit earlier in the session, but um, Shanda, Neil, it's not part of the playground equipment project um, because that's what uh, the capital approved budget is, correct? Correct. Making sure I got that right. Thanks, Victor, for the question. There is one more follow-up question from Anna about O'Connor Park, and then we're going to move on to Lake Ontario Park. So Anna asks, wouldn't it be expensive to remove the existing junior structure? So that no, it's not. Um, the cost for new play equipment. Uh, surfacing is uh, fairly significant. We have to take out the old stuff, put in the new stuff. It, it, it's not, it, it's not inexpensive um, to remove the structure and put put grass there. It would be a, a, a fraction of the cost. Um, so, if we are to abandon the junior play structure, we can provide a larger combined um, junior and senior structure. If we are to retain the existing junior structure, which still has play value left in it and, um, uh, and, 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 and lifespan, then we just have a little bit more modest of a budget to add to the, uh, to the replacement project. So please feel free to provide more feedback about what your preference would be on the uh, online platform. So we're going to move along to Lake Ontario Park. And the first question is from Bruce Bercy. So hi, Bruce, nice to see you here online again. Um, he notes Lake Ontario Park is used by more than children. It's very busy with seniors, students, and other local residents from Portsmouth District. There's a serious lack of equipment that can be used by adults, such as exercise equipment. Has this been considered? And if not, why not? I'm gonna beat Shanda to the punch on this one. Um, not because she doesn't know it inside out and upside down, but because, uh, uh, I, I don't know why. Um, so Bruce, uh, nice to hear from you again. Uh, yes, uh, adult exercise equipment is been, has been considered for the city um, for the outdoors. And we have an approved plan by the city council to add outdoor exercise equipment in various locations around the city. And it's likely we'll see at least three locations citywide. Um, and it's possible Lake Ontario Park would be a, a good central location uh, to see exercise equipment, maybe something in the east and something in the west as well. Um, so you'll have to wait and see as to when that gets implemented. But I believe based on the Parks and Rec Master Plan, um, we're looking at a number of years before um, that equipment actually gets executed. But yes, it is in the works with the Recreation Department and we would... Shannon and I would provide that support to them when, when the budgets are available. But as Shannon has mentioned, the project we're working on today is just play equipment replacement. Um, but certainly, uh, if you can be patient with us, we will get to the outdoor exercise equipment in, in due course. 
Thanks, Bruce, for that question. That concludes the questions that we've received so far for Lake Ontario Park and O'Connor Park. I'm not seeing any questions specific to LaSalle Park, but I just wanted to remind you that if you want to ask a question verbally, you can use the raise hand button um, and we'll turn on your mic. Um, Alex, I do see that you have a, um, a clarification to your comment is um, in summary, if the Western structure is to be removed, I think further consideration options need to be provided for a more senior structure. Um, and so I did include, Alex, I hope you can see it in the chat, a link directly to Get Involved Kingston. Um, and you'll see on the survey that there is an open text portion and you can provide that specific feedback um, or if anything else comes to mind after today's session about um, that play equipment. The next questions come from Susan. Um, can I ask oh. clarification? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Um, Alex, I don't know if you have a mic or um, if you wanted to respond, um, what you meant by a more senior structure. Because uh, I don't know if you can go to the image before this slide. The, it kind of shows the playground a little better. <laughs> this one here, Shanda? Yeah, the senior yeah. structure there yeah. has the climbing, upper climbing, which is very senior. Um, I'm not sure what you means, mean by more senior. <laughs> now, Alex, I'm going to turn on your microphone because it might be easier just to have a conversation about what you meant about more senior structure. Your mic's on if you're more than welcome to, to add in there. I think you're still muted. Alex, there should be a, um, a pop-up that's come up on your screen that says, um, that says that I've asked you to unmute. We also, you know, we also understand if you have some other things going on in the background, you're not able to talk right now, you can just add that extra feedback either in Get Involved Kingston or here in the Q&A. We're going to go on to the comments and questions from Susan. Uh, I'm, Susan's added two comments questions into the Q&A, so I'm going to group them together. So her general question is, what factors go into the choice of options one or two for all parks being considered? Uh, to continue my question, I notice accessibility and inclusion varies with options, especially in LaSalle Park. And how does this factor into decisions? So I think um, I've worked with Neil and Shanda for quite a while now. So I think this is a good opportunity to just talk about accessibility and parks development and how you consider that. Um, and then how decisions about playground equipment get made. And then Susan, I would um, suggest maybe if you would like to ask questions specifically about LaSalle and about the playground equipment there, then we can, we can tackle those separately. Is that okay, everyone? Okay, thanks. So Neil, Shanda? Uh, I think the decision of choosing option one or two in each of these parks, um, you know, will largely boil down to the choice of the community. Um, and we'll take that information in over the next couple of weeks. And uh, of course, this the feedback from tonight will, will count as well. <laughs> um, so if we hear overwhelming interest and in argument in favor of certain proposals, option one or two in LaSalle Park, for example, uh, we're going to listen. Uh, at this point, we think that all the options that we've put on the table that Ryan's team has developed um, are valid um, and could work for us. Um, but there are some preferences. So for example, in that image that um, Jen is showing on LaSalle Park, it has a more traditional platform play um, equipment. Um, and uh, the other option, which was option two, I believe had more of sort of a dome climber and, uh, and slide and swing uh, experience. And the difference between these two, uh, while both um, pieces of play equipment uh, have accessible experiences, available for children with disabilities. Um, that's a qualitative um, uh, exercise that um, it varies from child to child, but it, it, it may 
end up that the platform play equipment may have more accessible experience as an opportunity um, than the this option, which shows um, you know a slide and an overhead climber and um, accessible swings. So I think that that's really good feedback, and if that's something that um, you know we can hear through the Get Involved platform, that would be very helpful for us. Uh, but we typically don't propose any play equipment options that have zero accessibility, which is sort of a range of uh, a sort of a scale of growing levels of accessibility, depending on the sort of design and the scale of the, um, of the implementation of the project. So for example, we have fully very, very, very highly accessible um, play equipment installations in destination parks. And it's a strategy the city has used over the years. And as we um, sort of get to smaller neighborhood parks like LaSalle, the opportunities for that um, sort of shrink down. Um, but in the very least, we're trying to create a way to get children or their caregivers to the park, the playground location through a pathway, um, create a space where you can gather and uh, watch the, the play, create a surface that you can get right into the playground um, and then, you know, have elements of play experiences that um, are, are available for children with disabilities. So I think kind of a long-winded answer, but um, th there's, a, there's a range uh, and we, we seek the input from the community about, about what, uh, what they value and what they think will work really well for them and their kids. Thanks. Neil, I think this might also be another opportunity. I know Susan, when we worked together on the MAC committee and just how the projects that you work on, you also have project teams within MAC, correct? Correct. Yeah, exactly, think, go ahead, Shanda, sorry. Uh, correct, and I think Susan is here tonight is from MAC. Yeah, Susan was the one asking the questions about inclusion. All right, so so we, we will work with the committee members directly, not in the public forum, but we'll do that because they are essentially our VIP guides um, you know, through our all of our public realm improvement projects. We'll, we'll work with them directly um, on the proposed projects, um, and we can learn a lot from, from the feedback we receive from them, and we can provide information about how we um, really how we approach the design of uh, you know neighborhood park playground replacement versus community parks versus destination regional parks uh, with with significantly varying levels of budget um, and 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 play experience uh, for both able-bodied and disabled children. Thank you, Neil, for for clarifying clarifying that for me that it is a specific process that you go through with the MAC committee and that that doesn't take place in an open open forum like this in public engagement sessions. So thank you for thank you for correcting that for me. So thank you, Sue. I just see that you have a follow up comment in there and was just generally interested overall. So thank you very much for for that comment. I'm not seeing any other questions from residents this evening, either verbally or in the Q and A. Um, so with that, does the project team have any closing remarks before we wrap up for the evening? Charlie, just uh, thank you for being patient <laughs> as we go through all these questions and answers and uh, look forward to receiving the comments and providing a playground that uh, will work for everyone or most people. So the only other things that I have to do, and I also see that um, a number of people have dropped off from, from our Zoom meeting and I'm hoping it's because the weather's nice and you're getting outside for a bit. Um, the only last thing that I have to do is um, we do have an evaluation poll and it's specific to the 
online engagement session. So it's not feedback on the park. Um, we received that through the Q&A. And then I also dropped some links in the chat to get involved Kingston. So the feedback here is specifically on the session, how you heard about us and how you experience the technology. Um, and that feedback goes to the communications and customer experience group so that we can improve this experience for you. Um, we used to say that it was a new way that we received engagement, but you know, about a year later, this is, this is how we are connecting and taking, uh, taking the time to get your, your feedback with us. A few other housekeeping items is that Get Involved survey is open until 4 p.m. on October 5th um, and is available on cityofkingston.getinvolved.ca. The other thing that I will add is that this session was live streamed, closed caption, and recorded on YouTube. So if you go to Get Involved Kingston, um, you can go over and you can watch that if you either had to stop off or... Um, not able to attend today. And most importantly, thank you very much for spending your time with us this evening. It is greatly appreciated. Just gonna wait for, just wait for another 30 seconds or so um, for everyone to complete that public engagement feedback poll. Just took a bit of a nudge. I see that there's four of you, Brent, Carrie, and Laura, you're still, and Susan, you're still all here, but only one of you have completed that feedback poll. So it's really important to us because it does help us make this public engagement experience better. Okay, so with that, thank you again on behalf of the city and we wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you.